after learning their disability payments were suspended. The attorney for some of the clients of Eric Kahn tell us about their plan to move forward. Law enforcement officers in Southern Kentucky spent the last two days making sure registered sex offenders are in compliance with the law. Pothole and road repair could now get a little easier for city workers. We'll take a look inside the new four-wheel technology coming to a neighborhood near you. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 5:30. Good afternoon, Sam Dick and Amber Philpot reporting. After learning that their disability payments are suspended, clients of an Eastern Kentucky attorney who's at the center of a fraud investigation met and came up with a plan to move forward. Attorneys, for those who received a letter suspending their benefits, have decided the best way to move forward is to take legal action against the federal government and Eric C. Kahn. WKYT's Hillary Thornton has reaction from an attorney representing some of the folks who lost their benefits. It's a story, our top story at 530. Just days after finding out their disability payments are suspended, hundreds are now preparing for legal action against the federal government, with Prestonsburg based attorney Ned Pillersdorf leading the charge, working to file a class action lawsuit on behalf of those impacted. Basically, arguing they should only suspend these people benefits after they've had a hearing and not before. The real problem is generally if you ask for a hearing for Social Security as to your eligibility, it takes 12, 15, 18 months. The attorney for Eric C. Kahn says they agree the Social Security Administration should not suspend benefits before a hearing and that his client was just as shocked at the action as those who received the letters in the mail. The Social Security Administration has acted arbitrarily and improperly to cut off their benefits. Kahn's attorney goes on to say that this could all be because of the 2013 federal investigation not resulting in criminal charges filed against his client. Apparently, the Social Security Administration was not satisfied with that. And unfortunately, they apparently feel like they have to take some kind of action for whatever political or internal reasons they believe. Uh, these are good cases. These are people who are truly disabled. There's nothing wrong with their case. With 900 receiving notice, their payments are suspended. Another 300 receiving a letter stating their eligibility is being reevaluated. Kent Wicker says Eric Kahn has decided his presence will be too much of a distraction in the redetermination process, and he is encouraging his clients to find new representation. In Lexington, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. We have also learned today that National Citizens Bank, who holds a number of mortgages in the area, is offering to work with people affected who have a loan with them. Victims need to bring their letters stating their benefits are suspended. It was a very, very close race, but we now know who the Republican candidate for governor will be. Secretary of State Allison Lundergan Grimes announced earlier today that a statewide recanvas showed no change in the race. State Agriculture Commissioner James Comer officially requested the recanvas after he came up just 83 votes shy of beating Louisville businessman Matt Bevan on May 19th. If Comer chooses to request a recount, he will have to file with the Franklin Circuit Court by Friday. His campaign director says Comer's in Florida and will release a statement tomorrow about what his next steps will be. It's another steamy day here in the bluegrass with chances for rain ramping up once again as we head into the evening. It is that time of year, yep. isn't it? And this trend is expected to continue through the weekend for us. WKYT Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey is in our first alert weather center with a look ahead. How about it, Chris? Yeah, we're tracking, as you mentioned, those scattered afternoon and evening showers and storms that we've become accustomed to over the past several days. And uh, if you're not accustomed to them uh, just yet, you better get ready for them because we've got more of them in the forecast. A little look outside right now. Four of our live sky cams. Lexington, Richmond, a little bit of sun, some clouds. Likewise, Frankfort, though Franklin County got a shower or thunderstorm nearby. We're warmer the farther north that we live, but those showers and storms are beginning to lift their way to the north. Nothing like what we had yesterday with a solid line of boomers throughout the area. This one stretches from around Shelbyville through the downtown Frankfurt area and then northeast from there. We get the isolated rumbles of thunder with this. Nothing that is overly heavy. Nothing that is into Fayette County, Lexington area, over into Richmond, down to uh, or into the Winchester area looking good as well. A couple of sprinkles down the Mountain Parkway corridor eastbound on 64 toward the Moorhead area. 
Southern Kentucky popcorn type stuff, though there's a little spin coming out of Tennessee right on top of Lake Cumberland that is lifting to the north. That's providing the atmosphere with just enough lift to get some of those scattered thunderstorms to flare up. Weather headlines. Stormy setup continues, though as we get deeper into the weekend, with the tropical temperatures, we're going to watch for the potential for some even heavier rain. So when I come back, we'll take you into that weekend forecast with the hour-by-hour -hour outlook. They call it Operation High Maintenance. Police officers from multiple agencies have spent the past two days making sure that sex offenders in Laurel County are doing what's required of them by law. WKYT Sam Smith shows us what police found. These are registered sex offenders, and they're, we're checking to make sure they fo are following the rules. Deputy Gilbert Archardo says those rules include maintaining a current address with the state police registry. That's what London police and Laurel County deputies checked on the last two days with the help of the U.S. Marshal Service and Federal Probation and Parole Office. It's a, it's a teamwork effort, and, and it was a very successful teamwork effort. Investigators also check to see who the offenders are living with and their ages, and check to see what kind of computer access the offenders have. The goal here is to make sure each registered sex offender is in line with their probation and parole. If they're not, then we charge them, and we hope that will keep them in check and doing the things that they need to be doing by the law. Achardo says of the 69 registered sex offenders in the county, one was found to be in noncompliance. With any crime that uh, law enforcement investigates, is, is oftentimes you have re repeat offenders, and uh, it's no different with sex offenders. Uh, you have repeat offenders. So. In Laurel County, Sam Smith, WKYT. Law enforcement in Whitley County checked on their 75 sex offenders, too. The sheriff's office reports that two offenders in noncompliance because they were not living at their listed address. A man was arrested after deputies say he tried to walk into a courthouse with marijuana. Our county by county coverage begins in Laurel County. Deputies say 44 year old Lynn Volkeen was walking into the courthouse on Broad Street in London. They say they found a small baggie of marijuana on him during checks. He's been charged with possession of marijuana and is being held in the Laurel County Detention Center. In Pulaski County, a compromise has been made so that the football fields at two high schools can be repaired. Coaches tell us the school board has voted to put sod down on both football fields as a cheaper solution to the problem. Plans had called for both Pulaski County High School and Southwestern High School to receive artificial turf surfaces, but the Pulaski County School Board decided not to move forward with that project so other projects could be funded instead. The Pulaski County High School coach tells us he is still not happy with the solution. Also in Pulaski County, Governor Bashir and Congressman Hal Rogers announced today that more jobs are coming to eastern Kentucky. The two announced today that EOS USA plans to open an operation in Somerset. They'll hire about 150 people. EOS opens a or is a customer service call center on Valley Oak Drive, which will serve as the company's flagship national location. The company plans to invest four million dollars in the project. They plan to be open by the end of the year. They are no fun to drive over potholes. Potholes and road repairs continue around town now, and the city has a new tool it says could lead to more efficient road work. Our Rebecca Smith got a look inside the four wheeled technology coming to a neighborhood near you. If you've spent any time driving around in Lexington, you know the struggle of navigating a sometimes rough ride. The city's trying to assess general wear and tear, not just potholes, with the use of this roving vehicle. In addition to the lasers, the vehicle also comes equipped with a sophisticated camera system that takes photos of the road every 20 feet to get a better idea of what they're dealing with. The photos and lasers are used to generate a digital blueprint of every single square mile of Lexington's roads. Lexington Mayor Jim Gray says an estimated $38 million was allocated to road paving over the last five years, more than any other five year period. We asked how the city justifies the one time data collection price tag of almost $400,000. You, you, you want to have as, confident, as much confidence as you can in the recommendations that you're making to Albert Streets and Roads, to the administration. And us, this provides more efficiency in the process. Albert Miller heads up streets and roads and believes in this as a cost saving measure in the long run because he says this data needs to be collected to help them construct a five year plan for milling and paving. It'll give us a better understanding of what the street ratings really are. And it also 
gives us more tools in our toolbox to make different types of pavement repairs. In Lexington, Rebecca Smith, WKYT. The city is hoping to have all the roads studied by the end of next month. With that information, the company will make recommendations to the city on what roads need to be paved. You are still encouraged, though, to contact the city about problem potholes. You may have noticed some new hardware going up in the Hamburg area over the past few weeks. City officials say the lights at the intersection of Sir Barton Way and Old Rosebud Road are expected to go live tomorrow morning. The lights are currently on flash, but city officials say they will become operational beginning at 10 a.m. Construction on a busy Lexington road means changes and delays for drivers, and it's also led to police cracking down at one intersection. Kristen from Georgetown has our good question tonight. She says, when did Lexington make it illegal to turn left off of Clay's Mill Road onto Wellington Way? And why are there not signs alerting drivers to this major change in the traffic pattern? The city says no left turn signs were to be posted by May 15th on Clay's Mill at the intersection of Wellington Way. Also, no left turn signs were added next to the overhead traffic signals. Yesterday, the signs were up. Our camera crew was out there, but that didn't stop many cars and even a Fayette County school bus from turning left onto Wellington. The police met them with tickets, which could cost a driver $160 plus points on the license. Police recommend drivers use Stone Road or Keyshire Way instead of Wellington until they clear up the construction and get that intersection back to the way it should be. If you have a good question, go to WKYT.com. Some drivers may soon be able to control smartphone features from their car's dashboards. I'm Bill Bryant. Kentucky's top female office holder says now is the time for women to step up in politics. And Kentucky's two U.S. senators race a deadline while fighting on opposite sides of a key issue. The bottom line is ahead.